let's do some more problems that involve the ideal gas equation. So let's say I have a gas in a container, and the current pressure, so let's say that the pressure is three atmospheres. Three atmospheres. And let's say that the volume of the container, the volume is, I don't know, nine liters. Nine liters. Nine liters. Now what will the pressure become if my volume goes from nine liters to three liters? To three liters. So from the first ideal gas equation video, you can kind of have the intuition that you have a bunch of you have a and, and, and we're holding, and this is important, we're holding the temperature constant. And that's an important thing to realize. So in our in our very original in our very original uh, intuition behind the ideal gas equations, we said, look, you know, if we have a certain number of particles with a certain number of amount of kinetic energy, and we were to, you know, they they are exerting a certain pressure on their container, and if we were to make the container smaller, make the container smaller, we have the same number of particles. N doesn't change. The te the average kinetic energy doesn't change. So they're just going to bump into the walls more. So that when we make the volume smaller. When the volume goes up, the pressure should go. When the volume goes down, the pressure should go up. So let's see if we can calculate the exact number. So we can take our ideal gas equation. Pressure times volume is equal to nRT. Now, do the number of particles change when I when I did this this situation when I shrunk the volume? No, we have the same number of particles. I'm just shrinking the container. So n is n. R doesn't change, that's that's just a constant. And then the temperature doesn't change. So my old pressure times volume is going to be equal to nRT. And my new pressure times volume, so let me call this P1 and V1, and then P2 is this. And we want to, oh, sorry, that's not, that's V2. Oh, no. So V2 is this. And we, we're trying to figure out P2. P2 is what? Well, we know that we know that P1 times V1 is equal to nRT. And we also know that since temperature and the number of moles of our gas stay constant, that P2 times V2 is equal to nRT. And since they both equal the same thing, we can say that the pressure times the volume, as long as the temperature is held constant, will be a constant. So P1 times v1 is going to equal p2 times v2. So what was p1? p1, our initial pressure was three atmospheres. Three atmospheres. So we have three times, so three atmospheres times nine liters is equal to our new pressure times three liters. And if we divide both sides of this equation by three, we get what do we get? Three, li three liters cancel out. We're left with we're left with nine atmospheres. Nine atmospheres. Nine atmospheres. And that should make sense when you when you take when you decrease the volume by two thirds, or when you make the volume one third of your original volume, then your pressure increases by a factor of three. So this went to times three, and this went by times. One third, and that's a useful thing to know in general. If temperature is held constant, that pressure and volume, pressure times volume, are going to be a constant. Now you can take that even further. If we look at PV equals nRT, PV equal to nRT, the two things that we know don't change in the vast majority of exercises we do is the number of molecules we're dealing with, and obviously R isn't going to change. So if we divide both sides of this by T, we get PV over t is equal to nr or you could say it's equal to you know a constant this is going to be a constant number for any system where we're not changing the number of molecules in the container so we if we're changing the pressure so if initially we start with you know pressure 1 volume 1 and some temperature 1 that's going to be equal to this constant and if we change any of them if we go back to pressure 2 volume 2 temperature 2 they should still be equal to this constant, so they equal each other. So for example, let's say I start off with a pressure of, let's let me do it with one atmosphere, 
and I have a vol let's say I have a volume of two I'll I'll switch units here just just to do things differently. Two meters cubed. And let's say our temperature our temperature is is seven let's say it's twenty seven degrees twenty seven degrees Celsius. Well, and I just wrote Celsius because I want you to always remember you have to convert to Kelvin. So twenty seven degrees plus two hundred and seventy three will get us exactly to three hundred three hundred Kelvin. And let's say that our new temperature, let's say that our new temperature is well actually let's figure out what the new temperature is going to be. Let's say our new pressure is two atmospheres. Two atmospheres. The pressure is increased. Let's say we make the container smaller. So one meter cubed. So the container's been decreased by half and the pressure's doubled by half. So you could guess, you know, we've we we've made the pressure higher, the container actually no, that's not it. Let me make the let me make the container even let me make the container even even smaller. Let me make it Actually no, let me make the the pressure even larger. Let me make the pressure into 5 atmospheres. 5 atmospheres. And now we want to know what the second temperature is. And we've set up our equation. And so we have 2 over 300 2 over 300 atmosphere meter cubes per Kelvin is equal to 5 over T2, our new temperature, and then we have what do we have? We have 1500, right? 1500 is equal to 2t2. Divide both sides by 2. You have t2 is equal to 750 degrees Kelvin, which makes sense, right? We increased the pressure so much and we decreased the volume at the same time that the temperature just had to go up. Or if you thought of it the other way, maybe we increased the temperature and that's what drove the pressure to be so much higher given especially that that since we we decreased the volume. I guess the best way to think about it is this pressure went up so much. It went up by a factor of 5, went from 1 atmosphere to 5 atmospheres because on one level we shrunk the volume by a factor of 1 half. So that should have doubled the pressure. So that should have gotten us to two atmospheres. And then we made the temperature a lot higher. So we were also bouncing into the container. We made the temperature 750 degrees Kelvin. So more than doubled the temperature. And then that's what got us to five atmospheres. Now one other thing that you, you'll probably hear about and is, is the notion of what happens at standard temperature and pressure. Let me delete all of this stuff over here. Standard temperature and pressure. Let me. Delete all the stuff that I don't need. Standard temperature and pressure. And I'm bringing it up because even though it's called standard temperature and pressure and sometimes called STP, standard temperature and pressure, unfortunately for the world, that they haven't really standardized what the standard pressure and temperature are. Standard temperature and pressure. Temperature and pressure. I went to Wikipedia and I looked it up. And the one that you'll probably see in most physics classes and most uh, standardized tests is standard temperature is zero degrees Celsius, which is of course 273 degrees Kelvin, and standard pressure is one atmosphere. And here on Wikipedia they wrote it as 101,000 or 101.325 kilopascals, or a little more than 101,000 pascals. And of course, a pascal is a newton per square meter. All of this stuff, the, the units are really the, the hardest part to get a hold of. But let's say that we assume that this is, these are all different standard temperatures and pressures based on different uh, standard making bodies. So they can't really agree with each other. But let's say we took this as a definition of standard temperature and pressure. So we're assuming a temperature. Temperature is equal to 0 degrees Celsius, which is equal to 273 degrees Kelvin. And pressure, we're assuming, is one atmosphere, which could also be written as 101.325 or 3 eighths kilopascals. So my question is, if I have a gas, if I have an ideal gas at standard temperature and pressure, how many, how many moles of that do I have in one liter? How many? No, let me say that the other way. How many liters will one mole take up? So let me say that a little bit more. So, and then I also have, so n is equal to 1 mole. So I want to figure out what my volume is. So if I have 1 mole of a gas, I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules of that gas, it's at standard pressure, 
one atmosphere, and its standard temperature, 273 degrees, what is the volume of that gas? So let's supply PV is equal to nRT, nRT. Pressure is one atmosphere, but remember we're dealing with atmospheres, one atmosphere, times volume, that's what we're solving for, I'll do that in purple, is equal to one mole, we have one mole of the gas, times R, times temperature, times 273. Now, this is in Kelvin, this is in moles, and we want our, we want our volume, let's say we want our volume in liters. Uh, what is that, the VPN, okay. We want our volume in liters, so which, which version of R should we use? Well, we're dealing with atmospheres, atmospheres, we want our volume in liters, and of course we have moles in Kelvin, so we'll use this version, 0.082. So, this is one, so we can ignore the one there, the one there. So the volume is equal to 0.082, times 273 degrees Kelvin, and that is 0 0.082 times 273 is equal to 22.4. It's equal to 22.4 liters. So if I have any ideal gas, and all gases don't behave ideally ideal, but if I have an ideal gas and it's at standard temperature, which is at zero degrees Celsius, or the freezing point of water, which is also 273 degrees Kelvin, and I have a mole of it, and it's at standard, pre standard pressure, one atmosphere, that gas should take up exactly 22.4 liters. And if you wanted to know how many meters cubed it's going to take up, well, you could just say 22.4 liters times, now how many meters cubed are there so for every one meters cubed, you have 1,000 liters. I know that seems like a lot, but it's true. And any, just think about how big a meter cubed is. So this would be equal to, this would be equal to 0 0.0224 meters cubed if you have something at one atmosphere, a mole of it, and at zero degrees Celsius. Anyway. See, and then, this is actually a useful number to know. Sometimes they'll often say, "Okay, you know, you have, you have, you know." You have two moles at standard uh, temperature and pressure. How many liters is it going to take up? Well, one mole will take up this many. And so two moles at standard temperature and pressure will take up twice as much, because you're just taking PV equals NRT and just doubling. Your, everything else is being held constant. or The pressure, everything else is being held constant. So if you double the number of moles, you're going to double the volume it takes up. Or if you have the number of moles, you're going to have the volume it takes up. So it's a useful thing to know that in liters, at standard temperature and pressure, where standard temperature and pressure is defined at one atmosphere and 273 degrees Kelvin, an ideal gas will take up 22.4 liters of